December 1972. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? The Apollo 17 lunar module touches down in an unexplored region of the moon known as the Taurus Litro Valley. Apollo 17 was the last manned mission to the moon. It was going into dark territory. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life. Geologist Harrison Schmidt is the first and to date only scientist to set foot on the lunar surface. We were very aware that, that this was the last of the Apollo missions. We did a, an awful lot of taking pictures. With four cameras, they captured thousands of images of a place never before seen by human eyes. Based on the photography we had at the time, the Apollo photographs are really quite remarkable. Some of the images they take become iconic. Others fade into obscurity for decades. Every now and then, a photo shows up that really stands out as odd. This is one of them. In 2008, amateur investigators uncover one image from Apollo 17 that seems blank until they look closer. Suddenly out of a dark space, you start to see what looks like a pyramid. Image analyst Mark D'Antonio has studied the mystifying photograph. Here's the faint outline that looks like the pyramid. Now, we can actually modify this photo, increase the contrast, and change some parameters. Now, we see this a little more clearly. Whatever is that? We seem to have photographic evidence suggesting pyramidal structures on the moon. How could there be artificial structures on the moon, and who or what would be capable of putting them there? An intriguing explanation comes in July 2014, when the U.S. military declassifies a dossier of top secret documents. One of them is a 118-page report called Project Horizon. It reveals a detailed plan to build a fortress on the moon. This is one of the greatest Cold War stories that we've ever heard. An official document showing intentions to put a military base on the moon. The plan is the brainchild of a U.S. Army general, Arthur Trudeau. In 1959, he submits the document for Pentagon approval. He says, imagine what it would be like for us in the United States if the Soviet Union military could rain missiles down on the United States from the moon. No, this cannot be. We must fortify the moon first. We've got a US Army document saying that the establishment of a lunar base should be as much of a priority as the Manhattan Project was during World War II. That's incredible. When the U.S. military makes something a priority like they did with the Manhattan Project, there's really nothing they can't do. The conclusion says that the United States can establish an operational lunar outpost by 1966. You have to ask, how far did this project go? Officially, the Senate refuses to fund Trudeau's ambitious plan. What we know, or believe we know, is that Project Horizon was shelved. It never happened. If we look at others in the sequence, we also see shapes like this. Here's a, a square piece right there. Seen in context, there is only one conclusion. This is a piece of the lunar rover. The pyramid appears to be just a dark shadow across the seat of the rover. These are all part of the same sequence. One is just a badly taken, underexposed photo. June 1996. NASA's Galileo spacecraft is six months into its exploration of the Jupiter system. As it passes Jupiter, its electronic gaze turns to one of the gas giant's ice-covered moons, Ganymede. The probe's magnetic readings reveal something totally unexpected. An entire world covered with ice. But underneath that ice, an ocean. That ocean contains more water than the Pacific, despite the fact that Ganymede is smaller than the Earth. The discovery raises excitement among scientists worldwide. Whenever you discover water on another planet, the first thing you think of is life. How could there not be 
extensive life in that big ocean. But if life exists in the depths of Ganymede's seas, it faces many challenges. Ganymede has oceans, but they're not like the oceans on Earth. Perhaps the greatest challenge life there would face is the thick ice that covers the water. Ganymede's a different world. If we imagine the habitat on Ganymede, it's gonna be a thick layer of ice. Too much ice at the top for sunlight to get down. Pitch black, there's no sunlight. It's freezing cold and there's no oxygen. The revelation that life can exist with no obvious food source in a dark ocean buried beneath the ice has stunning implications for Ganymede. So what we're asking ourselves is, is could these, these oceans on Ganymede be full of microbes, just like a blood falls? Maybe because I study life in Antarctica, I'm more of an optimist about the ability of life to survive harsh conditions. Surprisingly, Ganymede's deepest waters offer the best hope for finding life. This is a world that has oceans and layers. It has ice, water, ice, water, ice, water. It looks like a striped cake. To have life, you really want rocks and water together because they produce the elements that living things need. Where you want to look for life is going to be in that last ocean level because it's in contact with rock. So if we're looking for life on Ganymede, we're going all the way to the bottom. With all the elements necessary for life present, there is good reason to hope that the ice water of Ganymede could be home to more than just microbes. We could go to Ganymede expecting only simple life, but I think we should keep our eyes open just in case there's something more interesting as well. It's had four and a half billion years to evolve. There could be long, ribbon-like creatures, 30 meters long, two meters wide, moving across the bottom. Predators coming right up behind him, sensing these trails moving and snap. Whatever form life takes on Ganymede, we could encounter it within the next decade. So the next step is the JUICE mission, which is specifically designed to go and study those oceans of the icy moons of Jupiter. The truth is, there could be no limit to the life that lives on Ganymede. It's really up to us to go investigate and find out.